And this uh, next section, if you know any of the songs, feel free to sing along. I am so happy to introduce you to some of the original cast members of Hair. Take it away, Michael. Probably production of, of Hair. This is Deborah Offner. This is Heather McRae. And from the original cast of Hair, Marjorie Lapari and Natalie Mosco. And from the 2008 revival of Hair, Arbender Robinson. And your, our, our Hair super fan, Molly Stillen, right here. Take it away, Natalie. Or take it away, Natalie first. No, Marjorie. Marjorie, speak first. Uh, yes. Uh, you asked the question. What's the there question? was a question. What makes hair to be one of the key musicals of all time? What makes hair to be one of the key musicals of all time? First of all, the alchemy of the creators. Tom O'Horgan, uh, the incredible director. Mm. Jim Rado, Jerry Ragney, mm. the writers of the book and the, and the lyrics. And Galt McDermott, who, ah. Uh, the composer whose uh, music is timeless. And the vision of Michael Butler, who uh, believed in the project at the very beginning and produced it. And Julie Arenal, the wonderful choreographer. Uh, the thing that really occurred to me is that, and it's what, 54 years now? Be nice. <laughs> 54. We're old. Look, <laughs> look, but we're still fucking no, here, okay? Look, look at me. <laughs> Whenever, whenever it comes up in conversation, and I happen to mention that I was in the Broadway opening of Hair, I see these eyes sparkle <laughs> in, in whoever I'm speaking to, and they immediately drop into their experience of what was going on with them back then, and how much they loved the show, or how much they wanted to see the show, but they were too young, and they, and they wore down the album, and, or they w loved the show so much that they wound up getting in it. And, um, but the show itself, uh, it, it spoke about the madness of war, the absurdity of war, and it spoke about love and freedom. And that is, you know, what we all crave, love and freedom. And there was an innocence in uh, the original cast members. We were, we were children, and we were enthusiastic, and we were willing. And together with the creators of the show, we, we all created the magic. And it was quite an exceptional experience. And I'm honored. Right. Mm -hmm. 
Rob asked us to say um, why we thought it was groundbreaking. So I kind of, I have a little. First of all, I want to talk about race. Contextualize a bit. 1927, first integrated show, Showboat. Black girl, white boy, didn't work out well. West Side Story, 19... Ooh. No, no, 55. 57, yeah, I wrote it down wrong. Um, okay, Puerto Rican girl, white boy, definitely did not work out well. 1962, no strings. Okay, we're in Paris. Diane Carroll, Richard Kiley. Okay, they lived. <laughs> but she stayed in Paris. He went back to Maine. Didn't work out. Hallelujah, baby. She had her choice. Do I go with the white guy or do I go with the black guy? She thinks about it, and then she thinks about Anita. Stick to your own kind, one of your own kind. Same year, 67, that Hallelujah Baby happened. Off-Broadway, Hair opened in October of 67. We opened on Broadway in April of 68. Bunch of white girls were singing about how black boys were terrific. Bunch of black girls were singing how white boys were so pretty. Suddenly, everybody was friends. This makes a big difference. <laughs> so that was one breakthrough. Second breakthrough, Jerry Ragney was our um, burger. And then he left, and we got Barry Maguire, Eve of Destruction. And then he left, and Steve Curry, who'd been woof, moved up, and he became burger. And then Ben Vereen. Now, nobody said anything, but suddenly Ben Vereen was doing burger. Later, my darling friend, Heather McRae. We had Lynn Kellogg as Sheila, then we had Diane Keaton as Sheila, then we had Heather McRae as Sheila, and somewhere about there, Melba Moore took over as Sheila. Nobody said anything again. So I think we had the first colorblind casting. So that's kind of cool. <laughs> then, of course, Mudra Marjorie has touched upon the political relevance. Um, there was such a schism of the day. I think you know what it feels like to be alienated from one group of your civilization. Uh, it's, it was very much like that. When I was doing hair in Paris, you'd get into a taxi, and the taxi driver would say, pour la guerre or contre la guerre? If I was contre la guerre, he was pour la guerre, I would have to get out and walk home. They were so, and this was money, you know, so that was really, and, um, what another thing we did with hair that was so important was we would update the show as political events changed so that one day we'd be singing LBJ, took the IRT, and then when he wasn't the president anymore, we'd switch to Tricky Dick, took the IRT. You know. So um, in the beginning, they went into rehearsal with a lot of the off-Broadway music, including Sheila singing Dead End. And that was kind of cool because it was really about how women were oppressed and it anticipated the Equal Rights Amendment. But in the way that the show was developing, she ended up singing Easy to be Hard. And it, was, it took until the race riots in the 69 for them to put Dead End back in as a song for the African Americans to talk about how they were being repressed and put down. So the songs came back in as it became pertinent, uh, which brings us to the music. Galt McDermott was uh, a musicologist specializing in African music. He did his uh, postgraduate work in uh, Cape Town. And he loved the African rhythms, the African music, the history. <laughs> Roots of rock and roll or jazz are right there too. And so suddenly, somebody on Broadway was writing shows that tapped into the modern music of the day. And then they became these hits, these monster hits, one after the other after the other. Um, and it brought in younger audiences. And Tom O'Horgan wanted to call the show a popra. <laughs> it, we became the American Tribal Love Rock Musical, but I think he foreshadowed 
Andrew Lloyd Webber and his poperas. The last thing I want to mention is something that had nothing to do with us. We had greatness thrust upon him because the League of New York Theaters did not want us uh, off-Broadway upstarts on Broadway. So they all banded together and refused to let us rent a musical theater. So we didn't have an orchestra pit. We had nowhere to put the band. So guess what? Tom O'Horgan, Michael Butler, Jimmy Rado, you know, all those wonderful people. Julie, I don't know if you're here tonight, but if you are. Um, they got together and said, okay, let's stick the band on a truck on the stage. I think this might have been the first time that the band actually was visible as cast members on that stage. I mean, apart from something that might have been like about an orchestra, and as you know, Rent did it later, and now you, you can't keep those musicians off, can you, Michael? <laughs> um, I wanted to say one more thing, and then I'm gonna stop talking, because, uh, you know, uh, oh, yeah, yes, I'm not gonna say that. I'm gonna say this, though. <laughs> Another thing we wanted to do was to do the off-Broadway playing schedule. You're not gonna be happy about this. Broadway did Monday through Saturday. Off-Broadway did Tuesday through Sunday. So we started doing Tuesday through Sunday, which made us the first show to do Sundays on Broadway ever. And we had to fight for that too. Everything was a fight. Um, so if you're dead tired on a Sunday night after cramming five shows in, it's fucking Hare's fault. I, I have one more thing. One more thing to say, um, the hair was seen by a billion people. It opens up somewhere practically every month in, in all around the world, in all sorts of countries with all sorts of different languages. It's quite a phenomenon. And so, mostly though, it's celebrated living, not dying. Yes. So. <laughs> what have you got, 1968, uh -oh. that makes you so damn superior <laughs> and gives me such a headache? I got life, mother. Oh, uh, yeah, you do. I got life, sister. I got freedom, brother. I got good times, man. I got crazy ways, daughter. Well, you do. <laughs> Amen. I got, I got million dollar charm, cousin. I got headaches and toothaches and bad times too. Like you. All right. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> I got my hair, I got my head, I got my brains, I got my ears, I got my eyes, I got my nose, I got my mouth, I got my teeth. I got my tongue, I got my chin, I got my neck, I got my tits, I got my heart, I got my soul, I got my back, I got my ass, yeah, I said it, hey! I got my arms, I got my hands, got my fingers, got my legs, I got my feet, I got my toes, I got my liver, got my blood. I got life. He's got life. I got life. He's got life. I got freedom, got brother. Freedom. I got good times. Good times, good times man. man. I got crazy He's ways. I got crazy ways. I got million dollar jobs. I got headaches and, and toothaches and, and bad times too, like, like you. Got my muscles, got my muscles. I got life, 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 life,
served, baby. <laughs> oh, man. He's great. Thank you for doing that, man. Thank you. <laughs> we kind of all just got together sort of last minute. Um, well, I joined the cast of the Broadway cast of Hair in um, November 1968. And by that time, Diane Keaton was playing the role of Sheila. She had taken over from Lynn Kellogg, as Natalie told you before. And um, I had seen it in October of 1967. I saw the very first performance of Hair off Broadway. And I, a friend took me and I said, oh my god, <laughs> I got to be in that show someday. And I will, damn it, I will. So <laughs> November 68, I auditioned for it. and. Uh, they told me a week later that Diane Keaton was leaving the show, and they asked me to come in and replace her in the role of Sheila. And I began one of the greatest years of my life, a couple years actually after that. Um, this is Sheila's song from here. Singing. 
stop, look at one another, short of breath, walking proudly in our winter coats, wearing spells from laboratories, facing a dying nation of moving paper fantasies, listening for the new toll lines with supreme. Space songs on a spider web sitar. Life is around you.